jazz age, the roaring 20s, the modern age. No booze for you, because it's prohibition times. The age of vaudeville, New York, April, late April, early May 1920. Welcome to the Ferguson Theater, Manhattan's most dazzling and dramatic vaudeville house, where our troupe of vaudevillians chase applause and fame and love and friendship and dreams and also love and success at the expense of friendship. And then they get back the friendships through love and kissing and some dreams and success and vaudeville. Some will succeed wildly. Some will be bitten by werewolves and healed miraculously. Some will love forlornly and an unlucky few, and thus far, very few, because no one has a lot of other things to do, so everyone's available, but it might happen that someone could meet an unfortunate end and die! Nasty! Let's meet our characters, shall we? He is an accountant. His job is keeping the books, but most of the time has been devoted to yearning and drama. The theater accountant and yearner, Jesse Gervais, is Lou Costello. I've always been a big yearner. Even as a kid in my first accounting school, my teacher said, you should be focusing more on earning. But all I could think about was yearning. That would have been such a good introduction, the man who puts the earning in yearning. I'm going to steal that and take credit. She is the toast of Paris, the burlesque queen and former owner and operator of a successful theater in New Jersey. Delia Barnett is Daisy Darling. Oh, I got so caught up in being a werewolf and, and having adventures that I forgot about my ultimate dream to be the top burlesque star in all of vaudeville and I'm going to do everything in my power to get back into the glare and gleam of the spotlight. Glare and Gleam were an unsuccessful vaudeville duo. Quite uninteresting, so we're not featuring them this season. Life is a whirlwind when you're a stage manager. Recently married and keep on falling in love with everyone. Christy Hansen is Bobby Smarts. You know, sometimes my last name doesn't really match my actions. <laughs> Bobby's, I believe, still husband after four weeks, during which they've only spoken for about a minute about how it wasn't going well. But he is a star at the Ferguson, former wing walker, now matinee idol. Tom Edwards is Riff Van Winkle. Sometimes. I just go flying up high in the sky to think and look down on the world and wonder, are things ever going to go back to normal again? Are we ever going to have a theater to perform in again? Will my new wife, Bobby, ever truly love me? Possibly, likely, and I doubt it are the three answers. He's an impresario, radio star, glamour puss, and yes, a vaudevillionaire. Matt Holden is Jack Potts. Hi, Mom and Dad. Uh, I just, you know, it's my weekly call, and I just wanted to say everything's doing pretty good out here. I recently became a werewolf, but just for a short amount of time. And it finally gave me the confidence to get on stage. So I'm going to do some more magic. And I was hoping to come visit you on the weekend. Ah, oh, I wish I knew their the phone number. The number you have dialed has been changed. <laughs> the <n> <laughs> Congratulations to the number you have dialed has been changed, lady. 100 years young today. He lifts weights. He fights werewolves. He's the strong man in the intense onesie with the amazing mustache. Vince Forcier is Barnaby Toughbottom. When 
you've got this much muscle, sometimes people forget about the most important muscle of all. The one that lies right here. The stomach. If you're going to be a scamp, double dealer, and arsonist, make sure you're a lovable one. Shannon Blanchett is Glutey Scamp Zingus. touch of class to the sometimes shabby world of vaudeville the glamorous movie and opera star who has been slumming it because she loves her husband belinda cornish is geraldine farrar oh my goodness well you know since moving to new york to be with my husband who i love and respect um life has life has been nothing if not a thrill why, yesterday I decided to take my lunch in Central Park and I was attacked by a pigeon. Uh, I was attacked by a pigeon who I fended off by feeding it um, half of my sandwich and a pickle. Um, this is a dangerous place to be! My sandwich and a pickle was another unsuccessful vaudeville act, although underrated i felt her husband is ferguson's other high octane superstar hollywood leading man silent film director mark Mir is lou telligan about six weeks ago i employed a werewolf to dispose of the corpse of my wife's lover things spiraled out of control from there That werewolf has a name, and that name is Stephen. Stephen the Werewolf is played by... Introducing Mark Mir. Yeah, well, I guess I'm at the source of everyone's problems. I'm the one responsible for the plague of lycanthropy that has brought the theater and vaudeville community to its metaphorical and literal knees. I guess I blame myself. But, of course, we are operating on Lost Boys rules, so if anyone kills me, everything goes away. Well, that's an enticing prospect. And finally, the man desperately trying to hold all of it together. The theater, the vaudeville, his friendships, his dreams, his bottom line. Jason Hardwick, his theater manager, Keaton Abbott. So I realized I've been placing my trust in the wrong people. I trusted Juniper Jones, Daisy Darling, and they left me. I trusted Plutie. Plutie screwed me over. The only person that I can trust is myself and Bobby. Yeah, I can't do anything without Bobby. Yeah, no, pretty much just Bobby. As we begin tonight's episode, which I've titled in honor of the new month that it is, The Daisy Darling Buds of May, do we like? We're not sure. A little bit of exposition, or expo as I call it. It's the morning after the big night. Most of the werewolves have been turned human thanks to Riff Van Winkle's silver spoons and Geraldine Farrar's plan to bring all the werewolves together to rehearse an all-werewolf production of a chorus line. From Clutie on down, they have begun to change back. The transformation has begun. And in our first scene, Stephen goes for his morning walk and finds Pluty in her little werewolf nest, crying softly. <laughs> I hum this song as I walk along because I, oop, what, Pluty? Oh, 
Fussy. I've just been peeing on things as my walk. So here, here, here you go. Well, Stephen, I regret to inform you that the power of the werewolf pack has been diminished by several. There I was. Turn, turn, kick, kick. Flip, sniff, lick. And all of a sudden, this silver spoon is coming at me, and Riff Van Winkle's lunging, and Geraldine Ferrara's is laughing maniacally. Maybe that was imaginary, and, and, and Juniper Jones is coming at me with these big human teeth, and, well, I ain't a werewolf no more. Huh. Well, I guess what you're telling me is that I no longer have a pack here. Where once there were many lycanthropes, there is now just me. But I guess that means I'm also freed from the yoke of responsibility. I can finally leave this town. I was pretty sure this was going to end with me impaled on a lamppost or something, but I'm happy for it to end this way. I'm just going to put this comedically small hat atop my head, pick up this suitcase, and be on my way. So long, Blutie. You take care, kid. Steven! Steven! Thank you. Do it and come back, Steven! Do it and come back! I'm so alone. That was the saddest victory for humanity ever! Here's a bit of a change. Keaton Abbott and Lou Costello are talking about positive things. Neither of them is leaving town. Neither of them is making threats. The theater was saved if you saw the fundraiser. The werewolves are gone. They get to dream about a bright new future. What's that going to look like? Well, we're in an oasis of calm. What does it feel like, my friend? It's so nice to look at these books and see, see nice black numbers, if not those sad red negative ones. It's good to be in the black. You know what they say. It's Yeah, I it's do. It's good. It's just really good. It's the time you want to spend the most time in. In the safest way. Now look, I, uh, I'm gonna have to ask you something. Uh, now that we're we're flush as as it is, I'm I'm gonna need you to be a bit smarter than you have been. Um, if we could put some money away, like a little nest egg in case you know there's a big crisis and we need some money to rely on uh, that we haven't you Maybe know just spent it all. Offshore accounts, perhaps we could divest our funds to somewhere in the Grand Caymans. I do think that um, diversifying our resources is a wonderful idea. You've got to be stupid not to diversify. We also need to diversify our lineup. We're going to need some new talent. I, uh... As much as I love Barnaby Toughbottom, the incredible acting powers of Lou Telegan, not to mention the scintillating chiaroscuro of attention to detail that Geraldine Farrar and the incredible uh, hair that Riff Van Winkle has. We're going to need you to find some new people. I'm thinking and, uh, about Glare and Gleam. Do you know the duo? You know, if, if we could get them, I, I don't want to turn my back on everyone because I know what it feels like to get your back turned on or have a back turn on you. It's okay, turn yourself I understand. Back. These are the days of disappointment, of eternal disappointment. You never want to get too attached to something because it's going to be taken away from you. That's true. I feel that we need to embrace what we have 
but also bring more into the fold. We need to have a bigger show. Bigger is better. Well, I have a little squirreled away just for such a show. What do you say we do a one-off? Something God. so big that it will guarantee ticket sales for the rest of the year. Lou, I knew I could count on you. You're the only person I can count on. Really? Really. Even in a scene about their wildest dreams, there were some undernotes of darkness there. If you saw or listened to our last episode, you'll remember, or maybe two episodes ago, Jack Potts asked Bobby Smarts for help. Bobby Smarts, as a werewolf, came in, and it was a bloodbath. So now it's the morning after, and they have that awkward morning after you bit me in a bloodbath and turned me into a werewolf conversation. You know that one. Oh, hi, hey! Hey! <laughs> wow, that was a crazy night last night. Yeah, whoa, I don't yeah. remember anything! Oh, know? I wish that was the case for me. <sighs> I remember no. being, uh, well, you were attacked me, uh, tore me up a little bit. And uh, then we did a musical number, and I remember that very well. It was, it was good. Not consistently good, but good. That's usually me, yeah. That sounds like me. I have to say that uh, I've made you some pancakes. If you'd like, oh! If you're feeling pancakey. I'm always feeling pancakey. I mean, <laughs> some coffee, and I thought maybe we could just talk about what happened and, uh, you know, oh. see where it all went wrong and see how we can avoid becoming werewolves and doing uh, numbers on the stage, uh, practically unrehearsed, if we could just avoid that in the future. Right. Well, I mean, you got to understand, um, I'm, I'm not an actor, you know, so. Oh, neither am I. <laughs> and, yeah, so, so any um, performance I, I would have undertaken would, would not be a normal thing that would be happening, you know? I just want to know, is, was this werewolf attack personal? Because personally, I was jealous that everyone was becoming a werewolf, and I felt fine when the attack happened because I wanted to become a werewolf to become popular. I was doing it to become popular. It's like the old fortune teller told me, if everyone was becoming a werewolf, would you do it too? And I said, no. And she said, yes, you would. And you will. And it happened. Yeah, I think that's what we all just want, right? To be part of the majority, even if the majority sucks. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true, right? Hey, I got to tell you, Riff came at me with the spoons and I'm not a werewolf anymore. And I'm happy with that. I'm just happy being me, free of werewolfness or, or anything supernatural. Are you still a werewolf? I'm happy to be me. I'm happy to be free. You're happy, and this is true, and I'm happy that you are you. I'm sorry for what I did when I was That's like okay. anthropic. I forgive you. of friends. Super or, friends. Yeah, super friends. The yes. best friends to the end. And you be you. I'll I'll be me. Me. You be me. You be you. You'll be free. And you'll be free. And 
I'm glad we had this talk. Would you like syrup? Yes, please. If you paid close attention to the thrilling conclusion of our most recent episode, you will know that Juniper, who had immunity, bit Barnaby Toughbottom. Yes, Barnaby Toughbottom has been bitten by a Juniper Jones, so he is now partly Juniper Jones. He's a bit more of a brassy song and dance artist, and suddenly wants to be best friends with Daisy Darling. Let's see how this plays out. all the time. Just this one spot, this bite. Oh! Oh, it, it, it's looking kind of inflamed where you were bitten. Are, are you sure you're okay? I'm all right. You know, I just, oh, just want to do high kicks all the time. Oh, me too sometimes. Isn't it wonderful? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, do you feel the need to spin around sometimes? Sometimes in slow motion, but sometimes quickly? Oh my goodness, slow, slow motion all the time. I just... I just want to be always in slow motion. Like if, if everything that happened to me could just happen in slow motion so that I can absorb every single second of it five times slower than actual life. Um, that may take up a lot of time, but if you have the time to luxuriate in just being slow motion, I think that's wonderful. Oopie doopy, Daisy darling, can we please go have some eggs right now? Sure, I, I, I think that would be so fun. Oh, you know, Barnaby, I always found you sometimes a little bit of a downer, but suddenly you're so exciting to be around. I know, I know. I'm... I'm usually always really focused on, you know, working out and saving people or juggling balls that are 200 pounds each. But lately, I've just been thinking about, you know, making sure that everyone around me is as happy as possible. I just want positivity and you know what, Daisy darling, I want you to be happiest of all. Me? You. Daisy, I am taking you out to have the best day of your life. Well, I could use that these days. I think that's great. Let's go. Let's dance there. Yes, let's. probably wondering what Lou Costello's idea for the big one-off show is. Well, here's what it is. Rip Van Winkle and Geraldine Farrar were the heroes of the werewolf attack, so there's going to be a big tribute show in their honor called A Night of Two Heroes and One Million Doves. They are preparing for the big night, which is to be directed on film by Lou Telegan. So Lou Telegan is guiding the rehearsal of Riff Van Winkle and Geraldine Farrar as they reenact their heroism. No, uh, just uh, talk me through this again. I was not present at the actual event, and so I must recreate it in a dramatic fashion, yes? Um, okay, well, um, we're going to need, um, uh, about 26 werewolves. 26 werewolves. Ah, uh, there is uh, something, there is something of a drought of werewolves yes, in New York City. So many City. werewolves. There, well, there, no, there is a drought. There used to be lots, and now, gone. Now there's are, too much. There, right. No, 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 now there's none. They are no, off the none. shelves. There but are, there were lots. There were lots, and then and there they, were none. Yeah. And then, then yeah, there, there were, are, there are dancing none. and singing. Mm -hmm. There are none for two specific reasons. Mm -hmm. One, because I put them in a production of the chorus line, yes. and two, mm -hmm. because Riff Van Winkle had spoons. Yeah. Right, so well, it all... 
It all makes sense. I'm just glad no one ended up impaled on a lamppost. That is all I'm saying. So just yes. ask, just, just answer this question. Who do you think, between the two of you, who was the true hero of the night? <laughs> well, you know, that's... Oh, well, I mean, the gracious, thing to say, the gracious thing to say would be Riff. Um, that would be the gracious thing to say. That and, and I'll be gracious and say it was Geraldine because her suggestion to get them into a musical totally uh, disoriented them and uh, made them personally into something that uh, was not dangerous, in fact, entertaining. Mm. And it took them off to a, a whole new uh, level. So you are saying the silver spoons were mostly window dressing, yes? Well, I was there in the beginning to corral them. Mm, and yes. uh, then she corralled them into a choir. Yes, yes. You were like the stage manager, and she was the star. Yes. Oh uh, well, uh, well, I, you know, like no, I, I really you could put it that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, good, good. Well, the stage manager. I don't know. Is I, very I, was, important. I was the Silver Spoon star. Really. Riff, I mean... riff, riff. Don't kid yourself. Stage management is incredibly important in the vital. It is. Cog. It is. You're... I'm in love with one of them. I know exactly what you're talking about. When it you're... comes to stardom, no. I mean, let's be serious. I mean, mm. I had the spoons and the wherewithal to go after the the werewolves. <laughs> Riff, we're really going to have to focus this narratively. I think that just making, trimming the fat, so to speak, of the story is really going to help us here. So uh, the silver spoon, the, the f trimming the fat, you know, the ugly yeah. fat that gets cut away from the, the good meat and the swept onto I, the dogs. Okay, I understand. The dogs and the you pigs. Know, too much yeah. exposition. Men, right. listen to woman talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, perhaps, here's a way that we could just trim things down, focus in. Mm -hmm. What if, just a thought, what if I, since I was the one who corralled and organized the performance of A Chorus Line, what if I also had the spoons? Yes, um, yes, okay. that simplifies it. It simplifies things. Okay, no, so that cuts no, riff. this all together. No, 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 Riff. As I mentioned, we have a dearth of real werewolves. We don't have many werewolves. They are all gone. So right. the werewolves will have to be portrayed by men in right. unconvincing so. fursuits. And you will be one of those men. You will wear a hot, unconvincing, uncomfortable fursuit, and you will dance out. Okay, and... what's really going on here? This is, this is you putting your wife in the lead role, isn't it? Oh, when no. really both of us are stars, is there anything wrong with both of us being stars in this? Riff, Riff, I have no skin in this game. I was not around for any of these lycanthropic antics. I am just reporting it as it is reported to me. You know what? I've had enough of this. I'm walking out of these talks. I'm gonna start my own show. How very day. Oh my God. Where are we going to find the guy to wear an uncomfortable, unconvincing fursuit? I'm doing this announcement slowly because I have to give the actor who plays Riff Van Winkle time to get back into the room and put his earbuds in. Maybe we'll postpone that because it seems that no I'm out of here. Yep, no, we got that. Just the opposite of what I was hoping for. So we're going to move on. Daisy Darling and Barnaby Toughbottom are starting their best day ever. They go to Barnaby Softbottom's ice cream store. That's the lovable Cockney played by Matt Alden. You can tell it's a different character because he took his hat off. I'm filling a lot of awkward silences I've created for myself in tonight's episode. Hello and welcome to Soft Bottoms Ice Cream, where the ice cream is soft or hard, depending on what you want. Oh, Barnaby, Barnaby, thank you for allowing us to have a last minute reservation. Oh, no problem. I hope you don't mind, but today's Bring Your Cat to Work Day. And uh, I've got this cat. His name is Oreo. Oh, my goodness. I Would you like bring uh, some, some ice cream? It's free today because there's a lot of cat hair in it. Uh, Daisy? I mean, I guess I could just eat around it. Yeah. Here yeah. you go. There's one for you. I'm just giving you whatever you get. It's just whatever you get. It's free. You can't complain. I mean, you could, but you can't. Mm, mine's all cat hair. <gasps> Are you two on a date? A romantic date? A oh, strong no. man and a beautiful lady? I love it. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Sweet cuz, sweet cuz. We are but friends. We are but friends on an epic journey for happiness. Oh, you can say that, but I've seen the two of you even enter here with your high kicks. Beautiful high kicks. Very talented. Yes. Love if I've ever seen it. Have a love cone. Oh, well, thank you. My hands are full now. <laughs> full of cat hair and whatever this is. <laughs> You know, I'm going to close down the whole store. You can have it for yourselves for half an hour. Here's a big milkshake to share. Ah, oh, on, on behalf of Soft Bottoms. I'm going to go to the downstairs. You've got it all to yourself. Oh, well, um, thank you ever so much, Lee. Um, this will be such a wonderful, completely unromantic, definitely just two friends drinking a milkshake with one straw. But Barnaby is beginning to have some feelings. You know what would be so fun, Barnaby? So, because I grew up with performer parents, and because I've been a performer myself, I've never gotten to have the joys of working a regular old Joe job. We could play store. Oh, play store, you say? Mm-hmm. That reminds me of a long time ago when a friend of mine wanted to play doctor. <laughs> It was a very different game than Store, but, uh, yes, pretend might be fun. Would you like to be the store manager? Yes. And who will you be? I will be your very incompetent worker, and you will just rip into me and say all the meanest things that you possibly can say. Just get all of your negativity out on me. Spare no, spare no meanities. Just make it real too. Just be mean. Oh, I don't know if I can, but let's try. Doop de doop de doop. I'll just put this mint ice cream right inside of the vanilla ice cream. What do you think you're doing? Have you even read the employee manual? How am I doing? Oh, so, so great, so <sighs> great. For some reason, I'm really lucky. Hey, I don't want to interrupt you, love, but what's going on in here? Are you playing shop? What does it say on the sign? No role playing! Get out of soft bottoms! Get out with your role playing! Quick. Get out! Run, run! <laughs> Get out right. of here and never come back! Daisy, now that we're in this dank, dark alley, alone and not playing shop anymore, I have to say, I thought this was just gonna be a friend's thing, but I keep looking in your eyes and all I see is planets rotating around other planets. I see a sparkle, I see a gleam. I'm thinking of a duo that used to perform out on the vaudeville stage, and I want to be that duo. I want to duo you. Oh, it's been so long since I've been part of a duet since I've done it. And they found true love right there in the back alley. That's the magic of soft bottom dice cream. Today's episode brought to you by Soft Bottoms Ice Cream, right near the Alley of Dreams. Just eat around the cat hair. Well, there's been a lot of talk about glare and gleam, so Keaton Abbott has decided to seek them out and have them demonstrate their amazing act. Glare and Gleam will be played by Let Me See, Jesse Gervais, and Shannon Blanchett. They will do some of their amazing song and dance hijinks for Keaton Abbott like they used to in their old glory days. Well, uh, so what you're saying is you're looking for some glare and some gleam, eh? Well, we used to bring a bit of the GG to the stage, didn't we, Gleam? Uh, yeah, well, you see, we, we already have a mime. 
Gleam has this thing. He's got this ventriloquist act where he moves his mouth, and then five seconds later, we hear his inner thoughts. Yeah, okay. If this unnerves you, it's part of my act. Because, Glare... It's... This is, um... It's all... It's all quite interesting. Uh, I, I was hoping for a bit more, you know, um... Glitz and Glamour, which I know is not That right. is another duo. You I know. want Glitz and Glamour, you're gonna have to go back to 1896 when we wiped the floor with them. I, I know, I thought I thought I would I would seek out uh, uh, Glare and Gleam because this is this is really what we want. We want uh, an attraction to bring them in, uh, but I feel if we could, you know, soften the glare a little bit and maybe turn up the gleam, uh, I would really, I would really appreciate that as part of our overall package. All right, Gleam, Gleam, listen to me, Gleam. You gotta stop doing the ventriloquism thing because the Hoboken Theater just called and said you're fired and they want you at the Ferguson. <coughs> there you go. Now I you're with I got a frog us. in my throat. Yeah, you know how it is. Well, yeah, but he just did a tap dance over on 42nd Street instead of this audition we're in the middle of. So are we hired or not? <laughs> I, I think we gotta do the glare and the gleam thing that we used to do. Oh, right, the old ventriloquism duo. I forgot. All right. You are you gonna put your hand up or am I gonna put my hand up? I don't know. I've always been a pitcher and a catcher. <laughs> Who's on first? We don't care. We piggyback. Hey. Oh, my back is so sore. I just flew in from St. Louis, but my arms is tired. <laughs> it's a good thing I got gout, cause I. Someone hasn't flushed the urinal lately. Uh, Oi. Oh. Uh, all right, Claire. Uh, uh, Gleam, let me let, let me tell you something. That was just a bit of our act. I mean, that's that's the warm up bit. This is exactly what we're looking for. We've got we've got a lot of performers. None of them are funny, but this is kind of the funniest stuff it's that so, I have. It's seen. almost unfunny. No, I love it. That we go outfit? through unfunny to funny, and then back to uh, completely unintelligible. I really like it. Some more of the avant-garde. That's what I think we should be. Everyone's done singing. Uh, Everyone's done dancing. Can, can we show them one more thing? Please. Absolutely. I would love that. Gleam. Gleam. Can we do the lift, Gleam? All right. Like we used to. All right. I'm going to put the... <laughs> Hold on here. <laughs> Pull you up, push you, get under my shoulders. She's standing on my hand. Well, here's another scene with a bit of glaring. Riff Van Winkle is furious about the way he's not getting star billing. He started to storm out of the theater, but he turned back around and is confronting Lou Telligan. He deserves better than this, damn it, and he's going to have his way. Lou? Mm. Ah, oh. Riff. Riff, how are you? Done. I'm, I'm, I'm mad, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Riff, You Riff. betrayed me, Lou. No, Riff, it was not like that. Yes, it was. Okay, maybe it was. You booted me out of my own story. Why? Why, because... after all these years? Well, there is only room for one star in this vehicle, I'm afraid, and I'm going to have to side with my beautiful wife. She is more of a draw than you are, Riff. You have to face facts. The days of the Wing Walker are over. Really? Yes. Well, maybe I'm going to make my own show while you're doing your show, and we'll see who's more popular. <laughs> I'm afraid, Riff, you must accept the fact that the 20th century belongs to opera stars. Uh, 
Where, where, where do you come up with that? Well, my wife is an opera star, and so she is going to be the star. I do opera. More, more. All right. Me and a guy named Bugs. I'm going to need you to work with me on this one. I'm going to conduct you, if you will. So. Riff? Riff? Oh my god, I've killed again! All of this stardom is going to the head of Geraldine Farrar. Geraldine Farrar storms into the backstage area of Bobby Smarts with a list of demands for the big show tonight. Hey, there you are. Thank God. Can you come down from that ladder? I'm not going to shout. Can you just come down? Hi. Can you just come down here? I'm getting a crick in my neck. All right. Enjoy the view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. OK, this is going to be difficult. Um, OK, so um, um, before the big show, I had a few things that I needed done, OK? You look really beautiful today. Stop it. I have a few things that I, I needed done and I need to stay focused, Bobby. You look beautiful too. <sighs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna need... Um, I love the way your hair falls on your face, like hair. Just shut up. Soft, just soft, up. okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna need um, six magnums of champagne. To put and it in your beautiful mouth? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You put in your beautiful mouth. Yeah, yeah, and you uh, pour it from my beautiful mouth into your beautiful mouth. Oh, shit. I just, oh, that's... I just said that with my beautiful mouth right to your beautiful face. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's... Uh, I need the wet floor sign, uh, frankly. Oh, God. Um... Oh, okay, what, what do you need? I'll do anything for you, I'll do anything. I'll tell you what, what else I need. Um, uh, I'm gonna need, um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna need uh, a, a clam bake. Oh, fuck. And um, uh, the really, really thick ham sandwich. And, and um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Have you had any other ideas on what we might eat? Well, I might need need to get you. Um, mm -hmm. I need. I. Mm -hmm. I just want to. Huh? <laughs> scene was brought to you by Three Foot Scuba Diving, where everything is just a tiny bit below the surface, but not very much. If you remember, in our big fundraiser, Jack Potts was rehearsing his hypnotism magic act and accidentally hypnotized Pluto Scamsingus. Pluto Scamsingus is still feeling a little off and goes to check in with Jack Potts and make sure that she has a clean bill of health, hypnotism-wise. Hi, Pluty. I've just been trying to find one million doves. I have one dove so far and seven pigeons. One of them's sick. So you got 999,000 to go. Yeah, Take I'll do down. it. I'm optimistic. What can I do you for? Well, speaking of optimistic, mm -hmm. I'm fairly optimistic that whatever voodoo you do that you did on me in that big fundraiser is 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 totally clear and i just wanted to make sure because i got this here bloodshot eye 
Ah. I can't tell. Can you look at? Does that mean I'm? Am I? Am oh, I that's still? not good. Oh, that's not good at all. Well, let's. The, the problem is that I hypnotized you, but I didn't know at the time that you were also uh, had the werewolf curse. And if you mix hypnotism and werewolf stuff together, well, oh, it gets messy. Believe me. Uh, here, we're just gonna have to do a little check. So if you can just, if you want to just get right in there, just kind of look at it. There you go. All right, now repeat after me. You're getting sleepy. You're getting sleepy. Uh, Jack Potts is really, really great. Jack Potts is really, really great. Come on, you can do it. Jack Potts is incredibly talented. Jack Potts is a... Wait a minute, Jack Potts! Oh, you were so close. That was very, very close. <laughs> Wait just a minute, Jack Potts. What? I think you're a no-goodnik. I think you're trying to get me to say things and do things that aren't necessarily true. No, just that's not true. What are you true. driving at? How dare you say that I have plans when I'm clearly just incompetent? I'll have you know that if I wanted that to happen, I would, I would actually have been able to do it. And I don't want anything except to do a good performance, Pluty. It's not my fault that everyone's turning into werewolves and has, and I know your secret. I know that you were hired to sabotage this theater. And I barely told anyone except for Katie. How dare you, Jack Potts. I think you're the real werewolf, Jack. No, no. No, you're getting sleepy. You're the real werewolf. Come on, get sleepy. Get sleepy. Jack Potts, I think you're very great. No! Oh. Jack Potts, that's enough out of you. I got me a silver spoon. Oh. And I ain't afraid to use it. But I'm now no longer you... a werewolf. It don't matter anymore, Jack Potts. You ruined my thing with Keaton. And I ruin you. Are you gonna stab me with a spoon? Oh! 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 This is hilarious! Stabbing is the new werewolfery. Lou Costello's idea seems to be going slightly sideways. He needs to check in with Keaton Abbott and find out why things are going off track and try to get things back to his original glorious vision for the night of one million doves and two stars, not just one. Yeah, come in. Hello? Can Hi. you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're on. Good. I'm here to put you back on schedule. Uh, okay. I, uh... To the night of a million doves and two stars. I need a progress res report. Resport. Sport? Uh, well, I'm happy to report that uh, we got uh, more than two stars. Uh, we've got um, glare and, and gleam. Uh, we also have, uh, we've also got Geraldine. She's on board. Uh, and, you know, uh, Riff, Riff is, Riff's going to be here. Um, yeah, yeah, and Lou Telligan, we've got, we've got all of, you know, what we about, have more than two stars. What about Barnaby Toughbottom and Daisy Darling? I, I heard uh, they're doing a new duo. What's it called? Two scoops, one cone? Yeah, it's, it's something that, uh, that I really wanted to, to put in the act, but I just, uh, I wasn't sure how you would feel about it, Lou. Well, how would I feel about it? How do yeah. I feel about Barnaby Toughbottom staring at the love of my life with his cosmology eyes? I, I see uh... the spinning spheres in his lids. I know he has eyes and only has eyes for Daisy. Daisy. I have a secret plan that will surely draw in the audience. What if Jack Potts could hypnotize Barnaby Toughbottom into doing something so dangerous that perhaps, well, I wouldn't want to put him in danger, but I wouldn't mind if he was in danger. 
I worry that I can't kill two people in one year. Sure you can. People wanted to kill some werewolves. They just walked away. We should have stuck them on a giant lamppost. I even have yeah. a gun. I brought a gun. I wanted to shoot it so bad. Okay, yeah, okay, Lou, just, Lou, just calm down. Uh, I know you're upset. So what we are gonna do to make this show is we are going to make Jack Potts hypnotize Barnaby Tough Bottom. And yeah, anything. We'll make him do something so dangerous that it'll go down in equity as something ever we can ever do again. Yeah, absolutely, Lou. Uh, yeah, whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. Just, just put the gun down. I would have ended it there, but I would love to see a bonus scene. Lou obviously had in mind how killing Stephen was going to go. I'd like to see what that would look like as he fantasized about the murder of Stephen. Let's have a quick look at that deleted scene. Hello, Stephen. <laughs> wow, you sure did murder him. Have some murder ice cream. Strong ice cream. Perfect for murder. Tonight's episode brought to you by Murder Ice Cream. And that'll do it for tonight's episode of Die Nasty. I say tonight, it might be morning. It might be Wednesday. Time has lost all meaning. Let's hear it from the cast of Die Nasty. Special thanks to our producer, the mighty Nicole Thibault. To our scribe, Mr. Jim Say. Say what? Say Jim. To our official photographer, Jana Ho. Also in the booth, Brad, facial hair Fisher with three arms, plus or minus two. And our musical and technical and everything else director, the amazing Paul, Paul Morgan Dino. I'm Peter Brown, the official voice of Murder Ice Cream. What's going to happen with this plot? Tune in next week to find out. Bye for now.